secularism separating state from religion to make you think O oh youth that you can practice your religion that's okay but just like every other religion it's practiced in certain places only inside the mosque inside the church inside the monasteries inside the temples but outside different story and so you see really in, our, in essence you can see it especially among the young people they have two identities the first identity is Bilal and Fatima and the second identity is Billy and Jessica they have the identity Bilal with the cap and an identity outside Bilal with the other cap on the side I mentioned the cap, what I mean by it's just a symbol. The cap is not really something that is everything in Islam. Mainly it's the character and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the identity. But what I mean by that is the identity is changed. Fatima with a hijab. Outside, Fatima, different story, tight clothing and so on and so forth. The whole perception is changed embarrassed to show their deen as though it's just inside at work I'm another person at home I'm another person in the masjid I'm religious out in the street I'm something else so this is secularism teaching young men and women be what you want to be do what you want to do religion is a distraction religion is for the ancient minded Islam is like any other religion it's a restriction and it's sad to say, wallahi, with great sorrow, that even some religious people make religion seem that way too. We make it look like it's rules, 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 do this, don't do that, rules, punishment, sin, hellfire. Why? Why do we do that? This is not how the Prophet ﷺ revealed Islam. My brothers and sisters in Islam, for the youth to be on the right path, we need to understand the youth. Number one, a teenager has hormonal overdrive. Their hormones are all over the place. Number two, scientifically proven, the frontal lobe of the teenager has not fully developed yet. Do you know what the frontal lobe does? The frontal lobe is responsible for reasoning, decision making, and solving problems in a research by the National Institute of Mental Health and University of California they said that the development of the frontal lobe occurs from the age of four years old to the age of 21 years of age so this teenager he reaches he or she reaches puberty at you know 11 12 or 13 and their bodies grow their hormones grow their temptation and lustful appetites grow but the frontal lobe responsible for analyzing, reasoning and making decisions and problem solving is yet to grow. So we must understand that factor in the teenagers and be tender and careful in how we teach them. The teenager is very sensitive about their image, their perception, perception of how people think of them. They want to be respected. They want their views to be acknowledged and they want to be accepted by their peers. Girls and boys are different in their methods, but the same desire is there either way. They want to be respected and acknowledged. They don't want to be shunned aside as if their views are insignificant. They are frustrated. They are frustrated because they feel that they have lack of freedom. They feel that they are powerless. They feel that they want to be independent, girls and boys. We need to understand this factor, brothers and sisters, before we begin to penalize them and punish them and put them down or, or anything like that. This is what they want. And that's why Allah made parents go through that first. When we understand that, then we can understand how to tackle the current culture of the young generation.